Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are checking out Vroid or Vroid Studio. Uh, it is a character creator for creating anime or manga style characters. Right now it is limited to females, but males are coming soon. And if you've ever used a character creator in a video game, you've probably got a pretty good idea how to use this guy. So we're going to look at it, and we're also going to look at how to bring your assets out and actually make them usable in your own game. Now I checked this guy out sometime in the past, but the problem was it was not in English. So none of the user interface was in English and now it has been ported which makes a huge difference now the website itself has not been ported so you're gonna be in for a small bit of challenge but it's available at vroid.pixiv.net of course I'll toss that link down below and this is very similar in scope to say make human which I covered in the past it's another plugin used to be part of a um, blender that's used for making 3d characters I'll toss that link down below as well so if you're looking to create a character especially if you are looking for that uh, Japanese style you probably will really appreciate this one. Now the download itself is a straightforward zip file and now that it's been localized it is a lot easier to use. Now getting to it could be a bit of a challenge just basically Google for Vroid let it translate the page and then ultimately you will get here to the download link. This is the link I'll toss down below. It's just forward slash download you could have probably guessed that uh, but go on down and grab the version that's applicable for you. Now as you can see there is a Windows 64 and a Mac version available. Sorry Linux guys you might have to use wine. Not sure how well it works but uh, there is no Linux binary. Grab the one that you want of choice, bring it on down, you will notice it's just a zip file. Extract said zip file out and run Vroid Studio from inside. Now this is completely free. I'm not too sure. Oh, there's licenses right here. Uh, it is under MIT license, so it's pretty liberal in usage. And then when you run it, you will immediately recognize something if you have ever used Unity. Vroid Studio is obviously built using Unity, uh, as you can see from the launcher. But we'll go ahead and fire it up. And here you see Vroid Studio in action. And apparently I have GeForce Experience installed. Damn it. Okay, so when you come on in, you've got a choice. You can basically load an avatar or create an avatar. Nice thing is, again, we are 99.9% .9 in English now, so it makes it a whole lot easier to use. So let's create a new avatar, give it a name. Let's go with Bob Dole, and then click Start. So right now, unfortunately, you are limited to females only, but male are coming in the future. You're also kind of limited on the outfits available, but you can see you have a whole lot of control over the various different aspects. You can break it down into uh, subsections, so we can go here and just do eyes, eyebrows, face. Uh, you can use right mouse button to um, rotate, middle mouse button to pan, and then scroll wheel to zoom in. Pretty straightforward, pretty much what you would expect it to be. And now you can kind of just start creating a character. Again, this is like a very, very involved character creator from a typical video game. So under the default settings, you've got pretty much every setting here, but let's just go into eyes. So you see, it just gives us down to the eye option so we can change the position of the eyes, like so, the proximity or the, the narrowness inside, the distance, the width, uh, iris width, and you can do this basically, you can change out the ears, you can change ears like you can and would want. Now sometimes you'll find that the the, uh, the settings are a little uh, um, opposite to each other, or, or you know you might have one for size up and then one for size down, where you'd think that would be a single slider, but you know it's pretty small quibble. Next up we go in here, there's a texture option right here, give it a sec to load, and this is where you can get fine-tuned control over the texture maps that are being created for the various different things. So if we want to change out the base eye color of our eyes to like blue, uh, we can do so right here, but you see you've got a scary amount of control over everything you're doing and you can actually see the UV map and the texture map that are controlling the eye area right here. So you've got the size handling of UV or you can go into world coordinates. Um, you can paint directly here uh, if you want to alter the shape. So this is I believe mostly the eye lashes that you're dealing with right here but you can paint them directly going into the texture settings and you got various different tools here. So you got a brush, an erase, and a blur. Uh, built in for dealing with this character. Now this switches out between original and tune, but I don't actually notice any difference. So I'm not 100% certain on what that does. But once you've got your character's uh, face designed and you got everything you want, you can head on over to hair. Uh, and then we can start basically doing the same process. We can start giving her a more advanced haircut. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. On my other computer, these are um, in Japanese, uh, and here they're just empty. So I don't know the specifics there, but what we can do is basically come in here to add procedural hair to our character, and then you'll see you've got options of control points. So we can either 
skewered the hair as so you see it's created a bunch of chunks of hair for us or we can go directly into edit and the uh, the lattice that controlled the creation right there is shown or we can go in here and then control our hair via control points like you would with a spline cage and then we can also uh, brush hair in so we can create new hair using the brush guide so brushed hair and is it this one brush so now we can just start streaking in new hair and you're pretty good to go now i'm going to get rid of this because it, it kind of is getting in the way you can right click and then do a delete and i'll get rid of all my brushed hair as well but that's how you can go about creating your hair and you see it's a it's a fully in-depth uh, feature as well and then again you've got control over how the texture maps are created for your hair and then next step we're heading over to where you create your body now, one of the things I found kind of shocking being as this is an anime creator is this isn't actually as laughable as I expected it to be. For some reason, I expected the, the breast volume here to be, go up to like 95 and be like absolutely comedic. But for the most part, uh, kind of human dimensions that they went with, which is kind of shocking to be honest. But here's one of kind of what I was talking about. So here you see kind of you're controlling the volume. And then here you can see you can control the size down. It's kind of strange that this isn't a single slider. I'm not really entirely certain what's going on there. But we've also got a lot of controls over things like how tall our character is, and then again, how short our character is. Now, I don't know why these wouldn't be combined into a single property, but it doesn't really get in your way. Now, once you're done there, you can switch over and start to clothing. And this is one of those areas where I think maybe they've got a future in so we can start getting more uniforms and options here but right now it is extremely limited and you can come in again and change up the texture mapping you can draw as you wish so you see um, change up your base colors and work on each individual material so hopefully this is an area that gets uh, more developed later on right now I think we're dealing with the accessory yeah so that's the ribbon or the bow right there uh, so we get into the skirt you can change out the color of the skirt and then you saw like the base color changed out there and so on. Now, again, I think this is an area, I don't know, maybe they'll be selling these in the future. I don't know what's gonna go on in the clothing, but you're quite limited in what you can create right now because there's quite literally this only this one option. And if you click preset, to be honest, I actually crashed last time I clicked this, so I probably shouldn't have done that. All right, we don't seem to be doing anything, but that is definitely a major limitation of the software right now. And then we head over here to the camera exporter and you can start doing shots. You can set up your camera, you can set up the pose of the character so we can set up how happy or sad or so on this character is. So if we wanted to make her smile, we can make her smile and it affects the entire character accordingly. We can make her happy or surprised and basically mixes of both. So you got your typical facial blend tool going on here. They actually did a pretty solid job of it. And if you wanna render it out at any time, you can click here and capture it, it'll save it as a PNG file. And you can control over the eyes, the, the position. So this is all positioning for animation. We've also got like phonetic letters, so like A, I, U, E, O. And then we've got again, control over the anger. And then we can do some things with her teeth. So we can give her some seriously large fangs and give her some fangs at the bottom. And we'll get some fangs too, so she's got outright piranha jaws going on. So we made this girl just mildly terrifying. And then we can actually go ahead, you can set the background, basically set to an image or a solid color like this. And we can get into animations. There's actually a number of predefined animations going on here. So we can, you know, let me just zoom out so you can see what we can do. Like so, so we can sit there, we can stand by, we can walk, we can run, we can jump, we can hey jump over. So there's a pretty cool amount of animations built in out of the box. But again, at this point in time, you're kind of dealing with mostly a toy because you've got limited outfit options. I don't know how to import your own assets. Now that might actually be a possibility. Uh, and that's kind of where we get into, again, a bit of the language barrier issue. So if we head on back over here, here is the, the zip file you download. There's actually a PDF manual on how to use and what you can do. Uh, Actually, it's only two pages anyways, and it's in, uh, it's in Japanese. So that, that is kind of limited on what we can do there. So I don't know how much assets you can bring in or how useful it will be for you know hooking this into your own pipeline. Now, the question is, how do you go about getting things out? And you're, you can see it's using standard Unity resource file formats going on. Is there anything here for plugins? Uh, nothing that really... So it's one of those things where they're going to need to document how to extend it 
to make it more and more useful to end users. And it might be on the website that there is some documentation. Again, I don't, I don't speak any Japanese and I can't read any Japanese, so I can't give you a whole lot more details. But what I can do is show you how to get this animation out and usable in a, a game of some form. Uh, we've also, before we move on, we've also got pose options. So we can set up uh, our pose in various different positions using various different control points. And it's a very, very polished setup. Like it's, it's, it's a very cool program that they've built here. And there's a lot of extent, there's a lot of potential here to see where it goes. It looks like it could potentially be the um, manga or anime equivalent of um, Make Human or Daz or those kind of programs. Although you can actually get uh, manga characters in Daz right now. Um, so the, the, it's also commercial and this is free. So it'd be interesting to see what happens with this clothing editor and what happens with bringing in um, your own uh, assets in the end and when they finally add male characters as well. But you can actually create a pretty robust and different female, even though I basically glossed over it in this example. And then when you are done, you can come in here, click the export button like that. I think I clicked it. Oh, I'm clicking again just in case I break things. I right, click that one more time. All right, so it brings up this guy. You can set in some details and properties of your particular character um, and some settings for redistribution, et cetera. This is, by default, it's gonna export this in this VRM format, which is all about um, uh, avatars. And I'm not particularly sure where you use these avatars online, but uh, it doesn't really matter to you as a game developer, because what you're gonna do is go ahead and export that out somewhere. I exported that out to my desktop. And let's just minimize that down. So there it is right there. Now, if you wanna go ahead and use this guy, we're just gonna take the VRM extension and get rid of that and change that instead to GLB, which is binary uh, GLTF format. And now that that is loaded, we can right click on this guy and say open with Paint 3D. Now, if this assumes you're running Windows 10, but basically GLB, there's a couple of viewers out there that should make it work. We'll let it load up. And there you see your character in glorious 3D. Uh, Paint 3D is a free program, by the way, for Windows 10 owners, uh, since the creator update anyways. But there is our character. There's no side effects or anything else going on. Things just kind of work. And now if you want to move it into a format that is more popular for game development, just come on up here to your menu, go to Save As, 3D Model, and then you will see instead of GLB, you can also export to FBX, um, which is the standard Autodesk format, which is importable by like Blender, Maya, Max, um, Cinema 4D, Modo, basically any 3D program supports FBX to a certain degree. So you can see you can get your characters out and in a usable form uh, for game development. Now I do want to point out again that this is more of a toy at this point in time, obviously. There is limitations on the, the outfits that can be brought in, the gender of the people being developed, but you can see where they're going with this, and the potential is definitely there. There's a robust set of tools in there that are fun and friendly to work with, and if they build it up so that um, there is you know, a male set and that you can bring in your own props and wardrobes and outfits and they start providing more, this could definitely be a competitor to other tools such as uh, Make Human or, uh, oh, what's the other one, the guy's name? That's uh, not coming to me right now, Gastoni Labs or something along those lines. And then of course there's tools like Poser and Daz 3D that, you know, they do this functionality again today, but those are mostly commercial programs as well. And they don't have that anime or manga focus. So today, day and age, it's not exceedingly useful. So I did it as a weekend video. Hopefully some of you guys found this interesting. It's a fun thing to play around with. And it is a way you can get assets for your game. Now, as I showed you the full end-to-end -end workflow there, you've got a huge amount of customization going on other than the things that you can't customize. But it is definitely a working point. Now you might have to work on your um, pipeline a little bit to get the animations exported. I'm not sure if they're out here. I don't think this supports animation out of the box, but I think that would be more a side effect of Paint 3D and not the actual files themselves. So um, there's also, I think, a GLB importer for Blender. So you might be able to bring them directly in and hopefully the animation information is there. So something to play around with, that's Vroid Studio. And again, I will toss the links down below. It's a cool looking product. It, it could definitely turn into 
into something interesting. And now that it's got the English localization, there's definitely a lot more of us that can play around with it. It was a much more tricky to work with tool when it was only in Japanese. And so heads up to the user, I forgot, I forgot your name, I didn't write it down, but um, someone on my Make Human video basically did an update saying that this was now localized. And again, it was a video I, or a product I checked out a couple of months back, but uh, the whole Japanese interface made it just basically inaccessible to me. So uh, the localization has really opened it up to the Western markets. And it'd be interesting to see where this project goes, but it is completely free and it's remarkably polished and it is quite capable in its very limited set of functionality. So Freevoid Studio, are you going to check it out? What do you think? Let me know. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.